Hello everybody, Phantoms Y here, and today we are continuing some Fate Stay Night. Last time we, you know, met some more of Shiro's friends, and, you know, he likes to cook, and he hangs out with Sakura and Fujine, and all that good stuff. Now today, I think we are going to be getting into the more of the main plot, and stuff is going to start happening. So let's hop right to it, shall we? It's almost 7.30. Sakura and Fujine have already left for their morning club practice. I went to school early yesterday because Issei wanted me to, but I leave my house at the usual time today. I run into an unusual scene when I reach the intersection. Several police cars are parked outside a house. Something must have, must have happened, as it's noisy and lots of people are surrounding the area. Hmm? I'm curious, but... I can't tell what's going on with all the people surrounding it. I have no time, so I should prioritize school. I reach school ten minutes before the bell. I enter the main gate as usual. I bump into a familiar female student. <laughs> she laughs as if something is really funny. Mitsuzuri Ayako. She was my classmate in the first year, and now she's captain of the archery club. She's very insightful, and everyone expected her to become captain since the first year. Well, in other words, her mental age is older than her real age, so she's been the older sister type everyone counts on since she was the first year. Though she gets mad when people say that. According to her, she's not that old. Huh? <laughs> お、言うじゃん。Admittedly, Shiro is kind of stupid, but he doesn't really seem like a problem student to me. Ah, <laughs> Mitsuzuri sighs seriously. It's rare for her to make a face like this, but even more than that, I can't ignore what she just said. なんだよ。信じのやつがやつ当たりしたのよ。わざわざ女子を集めてね。夢を持ったばかりの子に社をさせて敵中するまで笑い者にしたとか。はあ。お前、そんなバカげたことを見過ごしてたってのか。見過
それよりシンジはどうしたんだよなんだってそんな真似をしたんだうん聞いた話じゃ遠坂にこっぴどく振られたとかなんとかえ遠坂ってあの遠坂かうちの学校にあれ以外の遠坂なんていないでしょ2年 A 組の優等生ミスパーフェクトこと遠坂林業いやそんなあだ名は初めて聞いたけど It's the first time I've heard the nickname, but I would probably agree with it. With Tosaka involved, I can understand even Shinji getting turned down. And most of all, if it was Tosaka, I can see her refusing him mercilessly. Tomo Kaku, Shinji no yatsu wa kino kara zutto sono chou shio. O kage de atashi mo konna jikan made dojo de me o hikara sete ta ってわけ真珠のやつ変にこらえが効かない時があるからな三つずり大変だろうけど頑張ってくれはいはいけどね信じて懲りないでしょまた遠坂に声をかけて振られた日には今度こそ遠坂本人に何かしそうでさいやいくら信じても振られた相手には近寄らないだろうあいつそのあたりはちゃんとしてるぞけど相手が近寄ってくるんだからしょうがないじゃない遠坂さなんか知らないけどうちの道場をよく見学に来るのよエミヤは辞めちゃったから知らないだろうけどね That's the first I've heard of it 遠坂は Rin doesn't use any or doesn't do any、uh, club activities for personal reasons I thought she went straight home since she even turned down the recommendation to join the student council まったまにはそれもいいかあいつもお高く泊まってるし一度ぐらいは痛い目に遭うのもいいかもねミツズリ says some dangerous things come to think of it I heard that Tosaka has many enemies could ミツズリ be one of them? おいミツズリいくらなんでもそれはあそろそろ時間だじゃあねエミヤ今度私の弓の調子見に来てよ Mitsuzuri hurries off. I got us done, I'd say. But I like that part of her. Feeling calmer now, I head for the classroom. It's lunchtime. Our school has a splendid cafeteria, and most students eat there. But there are some old fashioned students who bring their own lunches. Two of them happen to be me and the student council president in front of me. その唐揚げを一つくれないか俺の弁当には圧倒的に肉分が不足しているうんいいけどなんだってお前の弁当ってそう質素なんだ一世いくら寺だからって何を時代錯誤なことをこれは単に親父殿の趣味だ小坊主に食わす贅沢はない悔しいのなら己で何とかせよなどといういっそ今からでも天祖になるか Haha, Issei made a joke. Issei's father is the priest of the Ryudo temple, temple, and a bold guy who's old friends with the. or who. Yeah, a bold guy who's old friends with the old man at Fujine's place. You can't expect a normal personality when he's friends with a guy like that. So, I was, so I was. I hand him my lunchbox. Issei bows deeply. How can I put this? I never know what to say when things like this remind me that he's the son of a priest. So, Emiya, I saw that you told me about the saga of the Lord. ちょうどエミアと別れるあたりの交差点だが交差点 ?The intersection this morning He must mean that clamor with all the police cars なんでもな殺人があったそうだ詳細は知らないが一家四人中助かったのは子供だけらしい両親と姉は視察されたというがその凶器が包丁やナイフではなく長物だというのが普通じゃない A long weapon? He must mean something like a sword. It was a murder. 
So that must mean the sister and parents were killed. Herp a derp. Obviously, Emia. I picture it. Someone barging in during the night. Unjust violence. A one-sided pillage like an accident. Slashed parents. The sister killed without even knowing what's going on. To the side, the child covered in their blood. いさ、Issei tries to soften the, the air apolog uh, apologetically. I was fine with the topic, but was I really making such a nasty face? And then, there's a quiet knock at the door. Issei addresses Kazuki, who just entered. It must be a simple talk about the student council, as Issei seems pretty relaxed. <sighs> That's not something you see every day. Despite his appearance, Issei is very shy. The guy who draws the line against his classmates, and even his teachers, is letting his guard down with Kazuki. <laughs> Kazuki Soichiro is the teacher in charge of class 2A. He is serious and stubborn. Probably that aspect helps him get along with Issei, who pr uh, prizes order and discipline. The two continue to talk. All the while, I can't get the story of the murder out of my head. Classes end and it's time to go home. I can't go anywhere as I have work today. I should leave school and go straight to the neighboring town, but I'm worried about Sakura. I'm worried about Sakura. I know it won't do any good to worry about her, but I should at least see if she's okay. I walk through the fourth floor, where the first year students are located. There's no one in the hallway, and not many left in the classrooms either. It seems they've already gone to their home, or, uh, gone home or to their clubs. Well, I've come this far. I'll go to her classroom, and when I've checked to see, uh, to she, the, <laughs> when I've checked to see she's not there, I can head to work. I look into classroom 1B. The red tinted classroom is quiet, and there's no sign of life. There's no one in the classroom. All the students have gone to their respective destinations. In that red classroom, a lone shadow remains. Even though we spent the past, you know, two lines saying that there was absolutely no one there. Sakura. I enter the red world and call out to her. Senpai. The face, covered by her long hair, looks even more lifeless than, than this morning. Sakura makes a gloomy face. She's clearly not doing well. Sakura, if you're not feeling well, you can't go home. Go to the train station. Let's go together. No, no, I'm fine. She picks up her bag. Oh yeah, she picks up her bag and starts to walk like she's running away. I grab Sakura's hand as she tries to pass me. A crash. Sakura almost falls over just from being grabbed. I quickly pull her hand back. 
the body I'm dragging is surprisingly light. Sakura, look, Sakura looks away apologetically. Jeez, what's wrong with her today? Sakura is silent and doesn't answer. She doesn't shake my hand off, but also seems like she won't go home obediently. Sakura mutters. If she says so with a face like that, I can't respond. It seems the circumstances at Sakura's house are complicated, and they're not something I can meddle with. No matter how much I think she's part of my family, her real family is the Matos. Whatever I say, they're just the words of an outsider. <laughs> I pull out a chair and sit on it. I also pull out another chair from the desk next, next to it. Shinji I urge Sakura to sit down. Sakura sits down quietly. Yes, yes. じゃあちょっと待っててくれ。生徒会室からお茶くすねてくるから。え、先輩、お茶をくすねてくるってそんなことしたら怒られるんじゃ。先生に見つかったらな。何？この手のことには慣れてる。廊下でばったり会わない限
With that many good qualities, I can under understand her being called beautiful alongside, alongside Tosaka Rin. But it's strange. I don't understand it. Sakura is alone often. She doesn't seem to have any friends in the archery club. And seeing how she's alone in the classroom, she might not have any friends in her own class either. Come to think of it, I only, only know Sakura from the archery club and from my place. I don't know how she is at school or at home. While I think about this, looking up at the red sky... Looking outside, Sakura asked me a question. A smile. It must be a lovely memory, as Sakura is smiling happily. I understand, but I wonder what she's talking about. I don't think it's strange to see someone practicing even after school. Oh, I see. Well, that's fine, but why are you smiling, Sakura? Oh, 
Her voice itself sounds so lonely. It seems like it'll be swallowed by the red in this room. Despite her gloomy mood earlier, earlier, Sakura smiles sweetly. And then, even though I'm pretty dull, I understand when she puts it like that. I don't remember it myself, but four years ago was right after my father died. Back then, I did lots of reckless things, so I guess I did something like that. Ugh. I wish she wouldn't talk about my height back then. Well, I'm not that tall even now, but I did grow, you know? I look away. She saw me during an embarrassing moment. Then... With a gesture like a prayer, Sakura says something strange. What? I ask, feeling worried. But as if to drown it out, the familiar bell echoes throughout the school. It's been 30 minutes since I stopped Sakura. The clock says 4.30. Sakura gets up. It doesn't seem like she's bluffing, as she really seems well. Sakura bows and, and leaves. <sighs> Fujine will be at my house, so she should be able to take Sakura home when she leaves. I have to make a living too, so I should go to work quickly. Twenty minutes after taking the bus from my school, I arrive at the neighboring town of Shinto, across the bridge. Miyama City is a residential district, so it's hard to find part-time jobs there, but the developing Shinto has many available. The school rules allow for part-time jobs, so I work a few easy ones. Within them, I prefer hard physical labor that ends as quickly as possible. It's killing two birds with one stone, as it builds my body while I get paid for it. Today's job is a simple loading, loading job from 5 to 8 o'clock. Even though it's only 3 hours, there's 6 hours worth of work to do. They make you run around without a minute's rest. So I should rest while I can, even if it's just for 10 minutes. It's a waste of energy walking around my, until my job, so I guess I'll rest in the park. The park among the buildings is like a big field. A park should be filled with people, like families and lovers on weekends, but it's empty here now. No, this place is always desolate. I'm a bit sad. The utterly neglected ground looks awful compared to the neatly organized surroundings. The desolate area makes the wind feel cold. This is the remains of the conflagration ten years ago, and this is the place where I was saved from burning to death. It's a large area, so if they retiled it, the park would get bigger. Thinking absentmindedly, I sit down on a bench. I stare at the burned land to pass the time. I don't remember what happened here back then. I probably don't remember because I was a kid, and it wouldn't have been an easy scene to memorize. All I can remember is that it was hot, and I couldn't breathe. And that people died trying to save others. 
For example, an adult that tried to save a child from a burning house. He died, uh, or he saved the child, but died in its place. For example, there were people who had their throats burned, but they gave what little water they had to one guy, and the others died. For example, there was someone who ran alone to get away from the fire as fast as possible, and everyone that he passed on the way died. And for example, people who died because they gave away something that was saving them, only to save others that they didn't even know. I didn't like things like that. It makes me mad that those who tried hard were sacrificed. Am I greedy to want an ending where everybody is safe and happy? All I wanted was to see people relax peacefully, so why couldn't I manage such, such a simple thing? Kiritsugu answered the, uh, so to the question I asked as a child. Of course, as a child, I denied it. Because Kiritsugu saved me, I knew he was a sorcerer who could do anything. I knew he was a superhero who couldn't ignore people in need, who saved them no benefit. So I believed Kiritsugu could have saved everyone back then. When I told him that, he made a troubled expression and said something that I remember I remember to this day. I understand that. It's obvious now that he said it. Let's say there's a robber and some hostages, and the robber intends to kill the hostages. With normal methods, most of the hostages will be killed. Even if you use a, you use a miraculous method to save all the hostages, there still will be one person who isn't saved. That, of course, is the robber whose hostages were rescued. The people a superhero saves are only those he decides to save. That's why even God can't save everyone. The fire ten years ago was like that. It's not something I, who was miraculously saved from it, can talk about now. I don't want such a thing. I don't want help that has a limited capacity. You have to help, no matter how impossible it is. I can't stand to have strangers dying around me like back then. So if I'd been there ten years ago, even if it was impossible, I would have gone into the fire and... That's for certain. Jeez, I'm hopeless. The five o'clock bell rings. I stand up quickly. I stand up and quickly make my way to my work. Bit more of a peek into Shiro's past. When my job's done, the sun is already set. It's a bit before eight. I finished ten minutes early because I worked too hard. It seems I worked frantically since I went to that place before work. Here in front of the station, the night's just getting started. There are lots of people and a constant flow of cars on the road. The buildings are still lit up and just looking at them makes me feel like I'm watching a grand festival of illumination. I walk while looking up at the lighted building. It's the biggest building, building in Shinto, so I can't see the top clearly. I just gaze up at the building, just enjoying the night scenery. When I think I see something out of place... I stop and stare at the rooftop. I focus my eyes, looking at the thing as small as a grain of rice. What the? It looks like someone I know. Why is she there? What would she be doing there? With her long hair fluttering and doing nothing, she looks down at the town. It doesn't seem like she notices me down here. No, there's no way she could see me. It's so high up, high up that I, with better eyesight than most, can barely see her by improving my vision with magical energy. I can recognize her since she's standing there alone, but there's no way she would notice me down here among all these people. 
She's just looking down at the town. Maybe she's looking for something, as I can feel her sharp stare even down here. I forget about the time and keep looking at the girl standing in the sky. She's on top of a tall tower. She's like a witch looking down at the earth with the moon behind her. And then, she must be done with whatever she was doing as she disappears. Her figure has disappeared and the scene returns uh, returns to the beautiful view of the night. I have no proof, but I think that I'm right. There aren't many girls with looks that stand out that much, and more than that, I'm not stupid enough to mistake a girl that I secretly admire. So Well, it's... Tosaka sure has strange hobbies. Just a hobby, that's all it is. I return to Miyama City. Unlike Shinto, it's really quiet here, as if... Um, as if it were midnight already. Sakura, you okay? She seemed to be feeling better, but since she came to my place to make dinner, I think I've made her push herself again. It's not like I'll achieve anything by going to her house now, but it should make me feel better than doing nothing. There's nothing wrong at her house. There's no sign of the strange foreigner Sakura was talking about, and the lights are only on in Sakura and Shinji's rooms, as usual. Wait a minute. Then what was that light yesterday? Was there someone other than Sakura and Shinji in the house? I spin around. In the darkness of the night, as if hiding in the sound of the bugs, a figure is standing. He's an unfamiliar old man. He must be really old, but he has sharp eyes and a presence that doesn't match his small body. Perhaps it's the difference in years we've lived, but he has a dignity that pressures me. Sakura. Then could this person be? まいったの。孫の頼みだ。見過ごしておくわけにもいくまい。水知らずのお前さんには申し訳ないが、少し痛い目にあってもらわねばならん。念のため聞いておくが、潔く攻撃の厄介になる気はないか。The unknown old man asks asks me such a question. There's no mistake. This is the first time I've met him, but he must be... あ、いや、違います。俺はシンジの同級生でサクラとは知り合いでサンポカテラに様子を見に来たエミヤシロウというものです。ああ、そうか。シンジとサクラの知り合いか。それは邪魔をしたな。どれ、二人を呼んで来
Zulk and sighs. He looks so shocked that I feel kind of sorry for him. いやいや、お主が気に病むことはない。わしの勘違いじゃ。つまらぬことを言ってすまなかった。それは孫たちに用があるのなら遠慮することはない。年寄りは隠居しておるでな。気兼ねなく尋ねるがよい。あいや、今
I used to have nightmares back when I couldn't get the fire out of my mind. But I saw less of it as time passed, and I'm well over it now. Or, yeah, I'm well over it now that I can let it slide even after dreaming about it. But I guess it was pretty bad back then. Since Fujine has been here since that time, she is sensitive to my change. Shiro, ない。なんともないんだから、人の夢に囲つけて飯を横取りするな。ちょ、シロが強くなってくれて嬉しいけど、もうちょっと繊細でいてくれた方がいいな、お姉ちゃんは。そりゃこっちのセリフだ。もう
Classes end before noon, and after I finish helping Issei afterwards, the sun is starting to set. I pack up and leave my classroom. And then... I bump into Shinji. There are a couple of girls behind him, being rowdy. As friendly as always. そういう言いこぶりが勘に触るって前に言わなかったっけ？うん、うん、すまん。よく覚えていない。それ、真珠の口癖だと思っていたから、どうも聞き流してたみたいだ。そうか。それじゃあ学校にあるものなら何でも直
Okay, and this seems like a good place to end the episode. I'm going to keep streaming, but I'm going to end this episode, this YouTube episode, here. So, as always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I will see you on the next episode of Fate Stay Night.